Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I beat again. She doing political commentary for the media speaks. And it is time for the much revered. There, there may even be a bikini dance in your future during this show, friends. Uh, we got uh, the Delta Cap of the Month Award show. That's right. And I'm I, I'm telling you what. Go to the fridge. Go wherever it is that you keep your food. And get ready. You on low def. You on high def. Get ready. I've never had this many dunce idiots to report on in one show during the entire history of the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. How's that? How's that for being real? I have never, ever had so many idiots in one show. So the first handful we're just going to have to run through. Uh, again, why do we do this? We not only do we like to laugh at our leaders who are wrong, but if we call them out, if you hear something that I that I comment on here and it angers you, if it sounds like it's an absolute waste of time and your money and your efforts, your tax dollars, call them. I'll let you know who the idiots are as we go. University student from Union bans free Tex-Mex sombreros for being racist. That would be the University of East Anglia. The student union officials orders Tex-Mex restaurant to stop handing out sombreros to students. Now keep in mind that Tex-Mex is a Mexican restaurant. And the traditional hat in Mexico is a sombrero. Now, would a black person wear a swastika or a KKK shirt? No. Why? Because it's racist. People in the United States usually do not walk around with Nazi shirts, KKK shirts. People in Mexico really do walk around in sombreros, you freaking moron! A university student union has banned students from getting free sombreros, sombreros claiming they are racist. Students were being given free sombreros by a local Tex-Mex restaurant in a bid to drum up business with a smile before uni chiefs ordered them to stop because it violates strict cultural appropriation rules. Let me tell you what. That is where you tell them to go to hell, to learn what free speech is, to not capitulate, and to not back down. Okay, I'm dead serious. You wear a sombrero every freaking day you walk into the building. That's what you do. Absolutely ridiculous, friends. Moving on, South Dakota drops teaching high schoolers about the American Revolution or the founding documents. Let me tell you something. This is a bad idea for a number of reasons. First of all, how will our future generations know what liberty means? What was given up? in order for us to live in the country that is outlined in the Constitution. How will they know what their rights are in the Constitution? Second of all, if we're going to indoctrinate them with how to put a condom on a cucumber, because it's important, then wouldn't you argue that by the same reason this could have some bearing? EAG News, Victor Skinner, Pierre, South Dakota. North Dakota students may or may not learn about the first 100 years of America's history. Important topics like the Declaration of Independence, the Revolutionary War, and the framing of the UN's Constitution, which outlines your God-given rights, may simply be ignored by teachers under new history standards approved by the state's Board of Education last month. That's according to Argus Leader. Um, current standards do not allow history teachers to delve into topics before the Civil War. So the new standards open up the door, but don't require teachers to cover an early American history, as many would have preferred. The recently adopted history standards are set to take effect 2016-2017 and whittle the current standards from 117 pages to just 44. Now listen, I understand that a lot of students do not like history. And that's usually because the history teacher is boring, not because history is boring. But... I digress. You cannot call yourself a school 
if you are not letting people know, students know, what their God-given rights are, how they're outlined in the Constitution, and how it applies to them. And that is why you're getting mentioned on the Dunce Cap of the Freaking Month Awards show. And it gets much worse, friends. We've got tons of these. They go on and on and on. Don't believe me? Well, look on Fact Cam. Here we go, Jim Hoft, Gateway Pundit. Illinois family... Aw, traumatized after Vander, vandals mark the word all over their Black Lives Matter sign. That's right, you can say that Black Lives Matter. But if at any point you try and tell these racist bastards, and that's what they are, if you try at any point to tell them that all lives matter, well, they're traumatized. Now, I don't have a problem with equality. I have a problem with inequality. And that is what Black Lives Matter brings now, isn't it? That's exactly what they bring. Um, they want to support every kind of thuggery and every kind of reparation against people that had nothing to do with their ancestors being enslaved to begin with. And they don't care about anything other than getting everything they want free or handed to them based on the fact that they think that they were done wrongly. And I do not mean black people. I mean Black Lives Matter. Most black people try to separate themselves from this movement as far as humanly possible. The same way that Christians like I, I try to separate myself from the Westboro Baptist boneheads. Listen to this. Columbia, Illinois says they were traumatized after vandals marked all on their Black Lives Matter yard sign. The family said they thought it was cute at first, but it just escalated and got worse. Well, I wonder if they felt bad for the old woman who had a Black Lives Matter member charge into her house, assault her, and take the flag out of her window. I wonder if they felt bad for her. I wonder if they thought she was traumatized. Fox 2 now reported, someone is repeatedly defacing a Columbia, Illinois family Black Lives Matter yard signs. The couple that owns the home is white, as a white son and a white daughter, and two adopted black sons, and they live in a mostly white neighborhood in the oldest part of the city. If they use the thinking part of their brains, they would put the sign inside the house in a window. But, you know, if you're a Black Lives Matter supporter, you're probably not that intelligent. And that's why you're being mentioned on this show. I knew something was going to happen, said Eric Reed, 20, one of the couple's African-American sons. I didn't know how bad or good it would be, but I knew that something was going to happen, he said. Well, yeah, that's because you support idiots. So uh, he says, despite the racial diversity of their family, they have never felt sting of intolerance until a few weeks ago. I thought it was cute at first. Well, you know what? People are sick and tired of being told that they're racist. Because you know what? Most of white America is not racist at all. And I got news for you. There's no such thing as white privilege either. And if that pisses you off, you can kiss my ass. Um, Obama wants the U.S. to prepare for 10,000 Syrian refugees next year, according to the White House. Now, the reason that this is getting mentioned on the Dumps Cap of the Month Award show isn't because I am against taking in people who have had their country displaced. Because if anybody should have to take in illegals, it probably should be the United States. Because it's the United States that funded the very people that led to these people being uprooted and displaced to begin with. They wouldn't be in this predicament if we hadn't gone over there and stirred up a bee's nest. So I understand even though I don't want to take in a bunch of refugees, I can understand why, and this is going to make every libertarian listening to me angry, but they're going to understand my point. We had no business going into their damn country, and now that we have destroyed it, or at least made it worse than it was, it stands to reason that we probably should take in some refugees, whether we like it or not. That's the price you pay for getting bad leadership. And I guarantee everyone listening to this knows that we do right now have bad leadership. The trouble is, they're not going to be vetted. How do you vet 10,000 people in the amount of time that he's laying out here for this to happen? He's going to end up bringing massive amounts of terrorists, and we don't even know that, that well, we, we do know that most of the people entering Europe right now are not even from Syria. So, I mean, don't show me the pictures of the dead children and the tired women, because that's not most of the people we're seeing. We're seeing healthy, well-fed early 30s, late 20s year old men entering these countries 
with no passports because they don't want to have a passport because they're not from Syria to begin with. In other words, the United States didn't do anything to deserve them. But President Obama, it says here, has directed his administration to prepare to take in at least 10,000 Syrian refugees next year, a White House spokesman said on Thursday. It says the number reflects a significant scaling up of the U.S. commitment to accept refugees from the war-torn country and provide for their basic needs, White House Press Secretary Josh Ernst said. White House spokesman says the Congress would have to make up a significant financial commitment to scale up number of Syrian refugees allowed to enter the U.S. I think the best thing we could do is to absolutely say that this is such a bad idea it gets mentioned on the Dunce Cap of the Month Award and should not be moved forward whatsoever. Does this anger you? Are you tired of hearing about this? Good, do me a favor. Call your representative. Let them know. The White House has a switchboard. Leave a message. Exercise your right to speak. Friends, this is brought to you by Change Taxi. Make sure whatever you do, if you're going to call a taxi in your, uh, with anywhere within about 50 miles of Canton, Ohio, tell Change your Transportation that you heard about it on the Correct Views and you'll get a great deal. This is the first of our little feminism dumdies. Uh, it's rumored that we're going to have a bikini dancer here just to anger the feminists. I do believe we are going to have a bikini dancer coming up here very shortly. But while we wait, listen to this. Kit Daniels, InfoWars. Feminist study. You're racist if you don't have sex outside of your race. Now, you see, the trouble with this here is that, or it's twofold. First of all, if you are choosing to have sex with somebody because they are black, or because they are Mexican, or because they are Asian, then isn't there a really good chance, I mean really good chance, that you're racist? Because you're, you're picking them because of their race, right? No, you're sexist if you don't have sex with people outside of your race. Now, what's funny about this is they did not exclude conservative Christians who have only had one sexual partner in their whole life. I guess they wouldn't even have to be Christians. Anybody who has only had one sexual partner in your life, you're racist. If you are not trying to sleep with somebody outside of your race, you are racist. Now, the funny thing about this is, uh, before I was married... A beautiful African-American girl had said that she always liked white guys, which I guess makes her racist. And I made her, I made a joke. I said, well, you know, they say once you go black, you never go back. But once you go white, you know you're all right. And she started to laugh and said, uh, asked me if I had ever been with a black girl. And I said that I had not. And we made out a few times throughout the course of the evening. Why? Because she likes white guys and I had never made out with a black girl. Now, I always wondered if, according to Black Lives Matter, I wondered if I was racist for that because I, I wanted to experience kissing a black girl. I guess that made me racist. Well, this is telling me that I'm not racist, that I actually did the right thing. I was racist because I guess I didn't try to have sex with her. I don't know. I'm just giving it to you as I see it. You're racist if you don't sleep with people outside of your race, a study claims. How do they get money for this crap? In a study entitled, Is Sexual Racism Really Racism?, researchers at the Uni of South, New South Wales assert that having racial preferences when it comes to sex is sexual racism. In fact, men who used online dating services more frequently were generally more likely to register as racist, feminist Samantha Allen wrote in an article about the study. You know what? What if you're just curious? Or what if you already know who you like to be with. For instance, I like very tiny girls. Beyonce looks like a linebacker to me. Um, there's a lot of girls that look like a linebacker to me. They're not attractive, white, black, or any other race. They just don't. So, I mean, really, this aggravating to even report on. It says, sex researchers Denton Chandler, Christy Newman, and Martin Holt asked over 2,000 gay and bisexual Australian men how they felt about race and dating through an online survey. These men also completed a region-specific version of the Quick Discrimination Index, a standard survey instrument that measured attitude of racial diversity. Now, what's funny about this is even, even if you are monogamous with the only person you've ever been with, you are racist if you are not sleeping with people outside of your race. Uh, political correctness is rampant. 
and it's absolutely destroying this nation, Michael Snyder wrote. That's because Michael Snyder is absolutely right. We'll be getting back to more feminism stuff in a minute. I don't want to bore my listeners, so I'm going to zip through a couple other ones here. Counsel to ban short skirts and miniskirts because they are disrespectful. Christelle, did you know that when you wore a miniskirt, you were disrespecting people? Well, that's because you're from Florida and Arkansas, but not Alabama. Listen to this. If you were from Alabama, you'd be done. Most young women have heard the phrase, you're not going out dressed like that, from their parents. Well, now they will hear it from the city council, too, if they live in Dadeville, Alabama, population 3212. Low slung trousers are already on their way to being banned, but officials want to make it a gender balanced decision, so they're considering banning short sh- skirts and shorts too. Let me tell you something, Alabama here. Um, in the early 90s, I want to say 93, 94, I went to see a band that nobody had ever heard of. I mean, literally, they played the, they played the fantasy and nobody had any earthly idea who they were. Nobody. There were about 200 of us down there rocking out and nobody knew who they were. Then the Christian right came and tried to ban this band. What did that cause? I don't know. Ever heard of Marilyn Manson? Because that's who it was! Um, this is only going to have mini skirts everywhere. Anytime you tell somebody something like this as a rule, look at, look at prohibition. It led to the rise of gangsters, and now they're going to try to ban skirts. You couldn't ban alcohol. You think you're going to ban a skirt. People are bent. Um, real quick, and this is brought to you by Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Look him up on Facebook because he is an amazing writer. This is a real quick one. The, the very headline explains why it's on the Dumb, Dunce Cap of the Month award show. For 199 days, the Treasury says its debt has been frozen at $18,112,975,000. The, re- the, the reason that that's laughable is because that's impossible. It's impossible that the debt would not climb at all. We have not climbed out of this debt. What they do is they're freezing it. Listen to this. They're just lying. What's it? What's freezing? Freezing is a glamorized word for lying. The portion of the federal debt that is subject to legal limit, that means you're not allowed to go over. It's set by Congress, closed Monday, September 28th, and uh, 18112975. According to the latest study, the Treasury statement, which is published at 4 p.m. on Tuesday. Well, wouldn't you know it hasn't gone up any at all. Why? Because what they're doing is they're letting it go up and then not counting it as having gone up. That way they can say they didn't break any rules, and once they finally get the okay to jack it up, then what they're going to do is go ahead and jack it up appropriately and bring it up by several trillions of dollars if they have to, uh, to make up for what they've lied to you ahead of time in order not to break the rules. So in essence, what they did is really, when you look at it, uh, they, they broke the rules. And friends, that's going to give us into some more feminism here. So let me go ahead and get my get let me get my music going because we all know that feminists don't like anything more than a lady being a lady. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do we have anybody? Yeah, we uh, have Serenity in here from the band Passing Time. Serenity of Passing Time is joining us. Um, Serenity is going to stick up for all you feminists. She's wearing attire that will not anger any feminists at all. And there's absolutely nothing here to bottoms on. Nothing here to anger any feminists. See, she's even wearing bottoms. Woman sues the uh, wait, I'm gonna go to that one. I need to go to my feminists. Where are they? Where are they? I went ahead of myself. Feminists claim it's sexist to compliment women. And I agree. Uh, Serenity, you look absolutely ama- I- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I guess I insulted you. You don't. You look like crap. You're still sexist. Is it, you look great. Sexist. I better keep going, or she's not going to dance. Um, Kid Daniels, Prison Planet. A feminist lawyer has publicly accused a man of sexism after he complimented her photo on LinkedIn. The woman, a 27-year-old Charlotte Prudman, garnered wide support for feminists for tweeting out a private message she received from intellectual property lawyer Alexander Carter Silk complimenting her stunning picture and her response to him calling him sexist for his unacceptable and misogynistic behavior. You look stunning. Um, she wrote, I find, oh, I, I'm on here. I find your message offensive 
I am on LinkedIn for business purposes, not to be approached about my physical appearance or objectified by sexist men. So, if you compliment a woman, you are now feminist. So, I guess the best thing you could say is, you're doing okay. Oh, thanks. That's it. You look at that. See how that works. Uh, she's not doing great. No, she didn't do great. She didn't do awful. I found the way. To, what you do is you just sort of blow women off. That's it. You just blow them off. And if you blow, are you happy now? Uh, I guess. See, that women are happier if you blow them off than if you compliment them. Feminism. Thanks Guys, for having me on, everyone. Serenity passing time, ladies and gentlemen. Are you in to censor the internet to save feminists' feelings? This is another one. And what they're doing is they're bringing all this to you to get you to swallow this hook, line, and sinker to bait you in for Hillary Clinton. The UN is planning to censor internet content that offends feminists or challenge their arguments, like possibly this show. Telling feminists you suck or you are a liar could be banned under new proposals. Well, I think they look stunning. Feminists claim that calling Caitlyn Jenner Bruce should be considered an act of cyber violence. Well, that's too bad, Bruce. All right, uh, let me move on here. Idiot actress Helen Mirren, whoever the hell that is, thinks men putting their arms around women is racist. That's right. Do not compliment the woman. Do not insult the woman. Do not put your arm around the woman. Do not use the internet in a way that the woman does not want you to use. Ooh. London with Crowder. Helen Mirren is the Academy Award-winning actress for The Queen, where she played Elizabeth II during Princess Diana's tragic death. I wonder if they mentioned the fact that the family's brought up so much uranium that cancer rates have gone through the roof due to power plants. That's fact, by the way. She's also known for her more naked role in Calendar Girls, where she stripped everything off. I bet she looks stunning, including her knickers, to sell calendars for charity. And so that's Helen Mirren. She's an actress. She's a very good one, whoever the hell she is. Based on the following quotations, she's also kind of an idiot if you delete the also part. I love how that's written. The new face of modern feminism. It annoys me when I see men with an arm slung around their girlfriend's shoulders. How about their wife's shoulders? How about their fiance's shoulders? How about their fiance's shoulders if they look stunning? It's like ownership. Of course, when you're young, you want the guy to take your hand and look after you. But when I see girls leaned on, I want to say, tell them to get your damn damn off your shoulder. Well, of course. I mean, you wouldn't want to snuggle. Uh, never mind that it was, you know, feminists 30 years ago fought for the right for PDA, which I don't have a problem with. They fought for the right to do that. Now, if you do it, you're wrong. So, so that's right, ladies. When your man puts his arm around your shoulder, what he's really saying is you're a coat in his closet. You're a motorcycle his mother wouldn't let him have. You are the new iPad Pro for which he has no practical use but once anyway. Because toys, boys like their shiny toys. And you're one of them. Congratulations. Friends, I can't even believe all the dumdies we have here. Listen to the woman sues the NYPD after her house was repeatedly raided by cops trying to arrest her dead husband. Now, you would say, okay, this probably only happened once. They didn't know he was dead. No, it's happened many times, and they were told that he was dead. In a telling example of police incompetence, a poor woman has been repeatedly subject to cops raiding her house in a futile attempt to arrest her dead husband. In 1996, James Jordan Sr. was arrested for jumping a turnstile in New York subway. Oh my God, he should have gotten the chair, clearly. A decade would pass without police pursuing him, and in 06, Jordan would succumb to his diabetes and died at the age of 46. 46. I worry that with all the sugar uh, Christelle consumes, she's going to be dead at 46. But I mean, that's, that's still sad. It wasn't until he died that officers began looking at his turnstile jumping hardened criminal, and they did so by harassing his widow. In 2014 alone, cops would tear apart the apartment of Karen Fennell four times as they searched for her dead husband, who was wanted on a misdemeanor charge almost two decades old. 
The repeated raids had gotten so out of hand that Fresnel was forced to hang her dead husband's death certificate and funeral flyer on the front door. Did it work? Of course, right? Nope. Still, police said uh, but came to her into her home and turned furniture upside down looking for the deceased man. That would be dead for you Usher fans. I wanted it to be the first thing they saw before they came into my home and flipped it upside down, she told the post of her morbid posting. I can't hide anyone in my apartment. It's not big enough for that, but they keep coming and insisting that he's in my house. After being harassed by countless teams, more than one, of incompetent NYPD cops, Fennell hired an attorney and filed a lawsuit. Last week, Fennell had enough stress of reliving her husband's death and settled for the city for 10 grand. I'm dead serious. If you're not convinced that the Fourth Amendment, the right to be secure in your persons, if you don't believe that that's already dead, then friends, fat can. You can see it. Now listen to this. I, I was a real strong one that this could have been a Dunce Cap of the Month Award winner as we start to wind it down here. We're now getting in, in case you couldn't tell, to the absolute nuts and bolts of the stupidest people of the month. Jeff Hoft, Gateway Pundit, what media bias, it asks. USA Today Headlines asks, if Donald Trump wins, what country would you flee to? Is your favorite social media analysis so far this year the digital analytics forum, the firm Luminusco, score, scoured 4.5 million Trump-related tweets? So where would they move? Where would 200,000 people intend to move if Donald Trump got elected? If life got so bad that Trump got elected, where would they go? Well, out of the list here, let's see what, let's see what stands out. Mexico. Um, generally out of the country, anywhere but the U.S. Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, Alaska, uh, uh, France, Hawaii, Jamaica, Ireland, Sweden, and Brazil. Friends, especially you two, I'm talking to you 200,000 people. I don't know how to break this to you. I'm going to try to go slow. But Alaska and Hawaii are in the United States. Idiot! It said, certainly the folks moving to Hawaii and Alaska may be surprised to arrive and discover that Trump is still their president because those places are actually part of the U.S. 5,800 people did not know that Alaska was in America, and 1,500 people did not know that about Hawaii. If I had known who just one of these idiots were, they would have won the Dunce Cap of the Month award. If you are too stupid to understand that, then you're too stupid to understand why a lot of people like Trump. And he's not my first pick. Uh, friends, this is another one that really, I, I asked Christelle like three times if I should give it to this, and she didn't. And the only reason I'm not is because the word may have is in it. CDC, Center for Disease Control for you Kesha lovers, military misplaces the Black Plague. For those of you that may not know, the Black Plague, also known as the Black Death, wiped out, I want to say, around a third of Europe. It was one of the worst, if not the worst, uh, medical catastrophe in recorded history. Well, the U.S. Army may have mishandled, may have mishandled samples of the Black Plague, which isn't known to be dangerous unless you count the time that it wiped out 60% of Europe's entire population. So, yeah, it was much worse. It was much worse, I should say, than I thought it was. 60%. Yeah, so there you go. The CDC, you know, they just lost a little bit of Black Plague. Hopefully they didn't lose it to ISIS or, you know, North Korea or China. Who knows? But, yeah, that... Might kill, you know, 60% of every any given continent, but nothing to worry about, friends. Keep moving along. Well, this is another one that really could have gotten it. Oh, my God. BizPack review. School goes into lockdown after student displays Confederate flag on his backpack. That's right. It's not enough to say that you can't show a confederate flag we are now going to shut the school down as if you had a gun 
This is your tax dollars hard at work. Your tax dollars pay for this kind of education. They pay for this kind of BS, just so you know. So when you want to contact these bastards at Rock Mart High School in Polk County, remember who sent you there. A student's display of a Confederate battle flag on his backpack eventually led to a Georgia high school going into lockdown and the suspension of three students last week. The incident started when a 10th grade boy arrived at Rock Mart High School in Polk County with the flag attached to his backpack. Ooh! He got dropped off out of his truck and came down the sidewalk just like any other student does. Principal Wesley Cup told Fox 5 News and he had every right, he had every job, I should say, every duty to stand up for the kid, but didn't. Eventually, the student who was white was confronted by two black students over the flag. They wanted to confront him about what he had on his backpack. What did they say? Hey, man, why are you doing that? Kappa said. When words degenerated into pushing and shoving because they can't take any point of view that isn't theirs, school staff quickly broke things up and Fox 5 reported all three students were searched and no weapons were found. Later, when rumors surfaced that more students would be bringing Confederate flags back to school, Cup ordered the campus on a lockdown drill with students in the class. Oh, yeah. See, now this wouldn't have even been a problem if they would have said, you're allowed to wear whatever you want. I just talk crap about the Black Lives Matter movement. And if you want to come into that school and you want to wear a Black Lives Matter patch on your backpack, you have every right to do that, whether I like it or not. It is time that we understand what free speech is in this country. Uh, friends, we're, we're getting to the we're getting to the cream of the crop here, the absolute cream of the crop. The last three of the dumdies, trannies, I want you to say birthing individuals instead of pregnant women, and that's because the phrase pregnant women promotes trans hatred, according to transsexual activists. No, it just points to a basic understanding of biology. It proves that you went to school and, you know, got your diploma and you were, in fact, able to tell a man from a woman, no matter how they're dressed, no matter how they feel. Kit Daniels, InfoWars, transsexuals want you to use the phrase birthing individuals because, of course, it's hatred if you don't. LGBT, who nobody really cares about anyway, activists have already convinced the Midwives Alliance of North America to stop referring to their clients as women and mothers but instead to call them pregnant people and birthing individuals so transsexuals won't get offended. How about I just call them absolute nutcases and keep using whatever phrasing I want because that's what I'm going to do. If you don't like it, you can eat it. Pregnant individuals are the only direct care providers for themselves and their unborn babies. Thus, the most important detriment of a healthy pregnancy is the pregnant person. In other words, well, that's not our fault if you can't learn to kiss our ass and call a guy a woman and a woman a guy. And we won't do it. And I won't ever. By embracing the idea that any human other than those in the class called women carry offspring to term, give birth to them, and nurse them, we are prioritizing gender identity over biological reality, which is great. It's an open letter stated. We are also contributing to the culture erasure of women's wisdom and their physiological power encoded in our female bodies in what creates, nourishes, and birth live offspring. In other words, learn something about biology, you stupid idiots. Women give birth to children. That's fact, no matter how you feel. Uh, Gateway Pundit Jim Hoft, oh, I already did that one, so we can jip by, jump by it. Well, British Prime Minister David Cameron stuck his genitals into a dead pig's mouth. Prison plant, Adam Salazar. Let me say that again. British Prime Minister, it's like the president, David Cameron stuck his genitals, that'd be his wang, into a dead pig's mouth. Now, it isn't very often that we mail a runner-up dunce cap award to anybody. It's also not very often that we send anything to another country because it's very expensive to send to another nation. However, this one's going across the drink, people. It really is. Listen to this. And for those of you that think I'm lying, and you're, I'm quoting a Black Mirror segment for those of you that know, look at Fact Cam. See those little blue, those blue, um, 
Those are links. Those blue words are links. Everything here is fact. British Prime Minister David Cameron pro performed deprived sex acts with a dead pig as part of a college in initiation ritual, excuse me, according to a book written by one of his Oxford peers. The bizarre ritual was part of an induction ceremony into the Piers Gaveston Society, which is an ultra-exclusive University of Oxford dining club known for its decadent sex and drug-fueled parties. Now listen, I've said this repeatedly, I don't give specifics, this is not a gossip show, but I am not a saint, and I do not always engage in sexual practices that would be considered saintly. I've never nor do I ever plan to put my genitals into a pig's mouth to join a club. The current UK Prime Minister's history of debauchery is outlined in the book Call Me Dave, the unauthorized biography penned by entrepreneur and fellow Oxford College Lord Michael Ashcroft, so it's not some no-name that's accusing this. According to a co-author of the book, a distinguished, Ox distinguished Oxford contemporary claims Cameron once took part in an outrageous initiation ceremony at the Piers Gaveston event involving a dead pig. His extraordinary suggestion is that the future Prime Minister inserted a private part of his anatomy into an animal's mouth. Now I understand you have to do these kinds of things, not because it turns you on, but because you have to do something incredibly depraved to prove your loyalty. The point is, you're going to get called out on it. Ashcroft says the claim was later repeated by the same MP and then mentioned a third time where he discussed further details including the size of the photo showing the alleged porking, what a great name, and the name of the person who poses in it, who may possess it. The pig's head, he claimed, has been resting on the lap of Piers Gaveston's society member while Cameron performed the sex act. So, I mean, it's even better. The pig was on another member's lap. That had to be... That had to be almost as disgusting as imagining Hillary Clinton's lesbian activities. Who's with me? The unnamed MP also told Ashcraft he'd considered joining the club. But for the contents of one gathering which left him walking out in disgust, I wondered what that could be. What it basically involved was getting drunk and standing on restaurant tables, shouting about screwing plebs, 